big home football game for our program. Uh, you know, it's always always exciting when you get to conference play, and you know, certainly being a member of the uh, American Conference, uh, uh, you know what kind of league we play in, uh, and the quality of the teams in our league. And so, uh, you know, to to start off with one at home, I think is uh, you know is certainly a big plus for us. Uh, it's going to be an exciting weekend. You know, weather in the Greenville area is. Uh, you know, I think we all appreciate this, this weather this time of the year better than, uh, you know, what we had there in August and early September with the heat. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a great, uh, great weekend, 3.30 kickoff. Uh, very good Tulane team coming in here. Um, so, you know, excited to, uh, you know, welcome Pirate Nation back, uh, and, you, know, you know, for another home game. I, I thought the stadium, you know, last Saturday night was just incredible. You know, I thought, uh, you know, the, the fan base and the student section, uh, certainly were a positive impact on the game for our, our roster and our players uh, and just really appreciate their support, especially the student section. I mean, that's, you know, it's, uh, it's been a couple of years since we had it like that. And so, uh, you know, just it was, it was great to see and uh, looking forward to having everybody back this Saturday at 3.30. Questions? <clears throat> Well, I think you see, you know, Coach Fritz's fingerprints everywhere uh, on the program. Um, you know, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams, I think you see a very physical football team. That's the biggest thing that stands out. You know, when you watch their offensive line, the way they play, you know, Coach and I have a very similar philosophy on how, uh, you know, how the game should be played. Uh, and I think it's just very obvious, uh, you know, watching them, uh, just seeing his philosophy there. So uh, I think the physicality is the big thing that stands out. Certainly they have talented players. Quarterback's a great player, uh, but that's the first thing that pops. <clears throat> With the quarterback and maybe a lot of facets, how did, when you look at last year's game at all and draw on any of that, some of the success they had uh, right. last year? Well, yeah, I think, I think that makes sense to look at it. We have looked at it uh, in detail. I mean, I think you look at the – you look at the sampling from the first four games this year, uh, and then you look at the stuff they did last year, because it is the same quarterback. It's a different coordinator, uh, but it's still same head coach, same philosophy, uh, and, and the same quarterback. So, you know, they're going to look at the things they did well against us last year. We're going to look at the things that, you know, we struggled with last year as we're, as we're putting together a game plan and kind of mesh that with what, uh, you know, what we've seen from the first four ball games. Coach, you can talk about your punter a little bit. Punter of the week this week for the Ray Guy Award. Obviously, you don't want your punter of the week to be a punter of the week, right? But he, but he was, and, and just talk about his, you know, the way he he delivers. You know, when when you need one inside the twenty, when you need a boomer, I mean, he's able to do both of those. Well, I think the big uh, improvement on John, you know, this year from last year has been the consistency. Uh, he's doing a tremendous job with hang time. Uh, as well as distance. You know, last year he would hit a good one. He would hit one that wasn't so good. You know, he, he would hit one with great distance. It wouldn't have great hang time. He was just very inconsistent. Uh, he worked very, very hard in the off season, uh, and, the, and that hard work is showing. Uh, you know, you know his, his, his punts are all four-plus hang time, uh, and with the play of our gunners, you know, Josiah, Josiah Hatfield's the one that really stood out the other night. You know, it's really forcing a lot of fair catches. And then, you know, you look at the last punt of the ball game, you know, in that situation, I wanted to make sure we were sound in protection so we stayed in a base punt formation so we would make sure that the kick was protected. But I really just told him, I said, this is where we need the ball. Uh, and, you know, he's, he was able to put it right where we needed it, just side downed it on the two-yard line, which created a long field uh, and really set up the ending of the ball game. So you're doing a great job. You know, I think that, uh, you know, you're going to see two of, I think, the best – Two of the best punters in the league, uh, you know, this week. Uh, Tulane's punter is one of the top punters in the country. Uh, so you're going to see two of the better specialists uh, that there are this this uh, this weekend. Coach Tulane's a team that has played a couple of ranked opponents already. They they play well on the road for the most part. Um, this sets up as a uh, interesting matchup. Talk about your points of emphasis as uh, as you enter this week's ball game. Well, you know, they played, uh, you know, very well at Oklahoma uh, opening weekend, you know, had a chance to win the ball game on the final drive. And I think, uh, you know, I think Pratt earned a lot of respect uh, from the Oklahoma, Oklahoma faithful with just the way he competed that day. Um, had a tough game at Ole Miss, uh, but, you know, 
Ole Miss is, you know, they're having a pretty good, pretty special year. You know, they've got a pretty big ball game this week also. But, uh, you know, I think that, you know, Tulane's well tested. Uh, you know, they had a tough loss to UAB the other night in a game that I'm sure Coach Fritz feels like they should have won. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a big challenge for us. Um, you know, as you look back over the span of the last 11 games or so that we've played, uh, you know, the Tulane game last year is one that stands out where, you know, I didn't feel like we played – uh, you know, at, at our best, you know, we were coming off the, the tough, the tough game at Tulsa, and certainly met, that may have had a little bit to do with it. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you did not have one of your better performances against this group last year. So, um, you know, our kids are going to be motivated. Uh, you know, between you know the way we played last Saturday night and first conference football game, and and you know that performance last year against Tulane. I mean, our group's going to be motivated. Uh, you know, that they want to play well. They want to they want to figure out a way to win this ball game, and so. Uh, I expect us to have a great week of practice this week. Uh, I expect us to be ready to play at 3.30 on Saturday, and I expect us to play very well. It's kind of our job to build up things and, and hype yep. things up. I mean, you look at big picture, you, you haven't won three games in a row since 2014. Um, what could that mean to be on a three-game streak and to be three and two? And, and do you sense, obviously, this is a big game for the protection of the program? Well, it's, it's a big game for a lot of reasons, I mean, and, and not to, you know, de-escalate your question, it would mean we're 1-0 and in the conference. I mean, that's what it would mean to win this ball game, And so it would mean we're 3-2 and two on the season. Uh, I think when you do look at big picture, I mean, it's, it would be obviously a big next step. Um, you know, we've, you know, you look over the span, like I said, of the last 11 games, we've done some really good things. You look over the span of the last six games, we're 4-2. and two. You're 2-2 two and two to start the season. So you're seeing some positive things big picture wise. Uh, so, you know, as far as that's concerned, then yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's a big ball game for us. But the biggest reason it's a big ball game is because the next one is the conference opener. It's a home game. It's a conference opponent. It's a good conference opponent. It would be a quality win. But now we got our hands full. We're going to play our tails off Saturday to have a shot. I think I think Aaron's you know probably back to full go now. You know the big thing is him. You know he he d just has not been able to practice full speed for a couple of weeks, and you know it's you you can't go out there and be prepared to play if you don't. And so I think the big thing for him is just having a great week of practice this week. I know that uh, Coach Harrell was meeting with him earlier today, just about you know trying to get him back you know into the swing of things rotationally. Um, you know, because obviously, if you know, if, if if we if we can get him playing at a high level, that just that just creates so much more depth uh, for us defensively and allows us to do a lot of different things. Uh, you know, with Rob, just don't really know um, the extent right now. Uh, we don't think it's uh, too serious. Uh, so, but uh, you know, we'll know later this week. Coach, I noticed early in the second half, Trout Holler got some positions at center. He looked really good live ball. How did he do with the pre-snap responsibilities at the center position? Well, Trent actually started the game the other night, so he played a good bit in the first half too, and uh, he actually finished the game against uh, Marshall. So, you know, he's been in the rotation, you know, pretty steadily and playing uh, well. Uh, Avery uh, has been uh, playing well also. Avery was dealing with a little bit of an injury deal last week. Uh, he's back and he's fine now, um, but you know there's there's really not a not a, not any drop off you know mentally uh, between Avery and Trent. Uh, and in fact, that's probably one of Trent's strengths. Um, you know, they're just a, there's a little bit different body types. Keaton's been able to bust off some big runs. We maybe haven't seen that Rajay game that we saw so often last year. Is he frustrated all by that? And what do you think maybe it takes to get him going with those games? Well, I think I think they're 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 both pushing themselves to play um, a little bit better. Um, you know, Keaton has popped a couple of big plays. Um, you know, they they I think one of them has 45 carries, the other one has 43 carries. You know, they're we're splitting reps with them, so they're both getting you know pretty equal touches, which is what we want. We want them both fresh when they're in there. Um, you know, they both want to play better. You know, Rajay obviously wants to, you know, wants to be more productive, but Keaton does also. And I think that's, 
that's something that's a big stress for us this week is and I don't want them pushing you know to the point that they're you know they're they're too much you know it's got it's a feel thing in the run game now both of them you know we want them you know getting vertical running behind their pads you know doing all those things um, you know, but we really need to, you know, continue to bring them along with that offensive line as far as seeing the cuts and making the cuts and being decisive. I think those are the big things. Anything else, two straight close games, uh, two straight wins in those close games. It was very character building wins. How do you think that will help you down the stretch? It really matters most. Well, you know, it's. Uh, I think I'd, I'd rather win the close games than lose them. That's for sure. I mean, it's uh, we've we've had our share of close losses in my first couple of years here, and so it's uh, it was good, great to get a uh, a good road win at Marshall in a very uh, tight, you know, contested fourth quarter. Um, I think uh, you know if you're looking for a positive from last Saturday night, it's you know we did not play well. Um, uh, I'm not happy with the way we performed, uh, but we found a way to win the ball game. And so uh, you're obviously in a lot better space than you would be if you had lost that ball game. So I just think that, uh, you know, being in those late game situations, uh, there's no substitute for experience. I don't care what kind of experience you're talking about. Uh, you know, the more you're in situations and the more experience you get with them, the more comfortable that you are, uh, you know, in those, in those situations as far as execution. We got to be better on first down. That's the biggest problem. You know, if if we can get our offense in in third and threes and third and fours, then you're going to see us be a lot more effective on on third down. If we're going to be in third and nines and third and elevens, then we're not going to be very effective. And that's those are the biggest issues. And you know, it's it, it was the issue the other night. Is just you know we, we've got to be more productive on the early downs. Uh, drive the football better. Uh, you know, it's just you, you can't continually get yourselves in, in third and longs. Those are those are challenging situations for you offensively. It's what we try to do defensively. You know, we our big thing on defense is you know try to play well on first and second down, get it to third down, and win third down. Uh, but if you're if you're sitting third and two defensively all the time, you're going to struggle on third down. So um, that's the big thing. It's just being more productive on the early downs. Any other questions? Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. This is East Carolina defense coordinator, Blake Harrell. And you listen to Sports Objective, the official unofficial podcast of the Pirates.